Okay. And so, um, we're not we're not remembering the process um, of spirituality, but we remember the process of natural understanding or natural ways because when we come into the world, we're adapted to the natural process. And so um, the whole journey has to do with us waking up to true consciousness and waking up to um, understanding. Last week we talked a lot about eternity and the eternal presence, and um, God brought forth the word um, concerning why you know, it's necessary for us to accomplish eternal living. Um, I don't really think that we have to accomplish eternal living. We just have to remember that we're eternal beings. Um, And so that is um, a statement that we could add into our notes because being eternal beings and discussing this here, the more we talk about it, the more we remember and we come into it. There's a lot of things that we discuss about life, and it has more to do with natural than it does with spirituality. And so the more we practice and we think on spiritual things, the more we become them. Even the Christian has a greater practice to understand their spiritual nature because in most cases, the churches have been um, watered down to a government um, type of teaching, and the governing um, factors have to do with the world. And so the church has become more worldly than it is spiritual. All right. So eternity is something that Jesus came to show people, um, and because there is an eternal being that lives within us, what happens is is that we have to start thinking more on everlasting life. Um, everlasting life means that, again, when I awaken to the truth of who I am, I awaken to the fact that I am an eternal being. So <clears throat> we were discussing eternal, not eternal, but conscious awakening because so many people are hurt by the actions of others. There's more hate in the world than there is love. Um, if we're not careful, those that are walking in a love walk of compassion will um, get caught up or taken back to um, the world of hate uh, because we were discussing it's like the walking dead or um, zombies. We watch these here movies and the walking dead, they're um, eating and um, feeding off of people that, have been awakened, and so their ulterior motive is to feed off of the person that's awakened, that sees them or that's afraid of them running from them because they, so to speak, have a heart. But the world of zombies have become so monopolizing that it's almost hard for the individual um, that is awakened to overcome them. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. This is a metaphor or an understanding of the way that the world is, that we're even watching TV, and they're, uh, they've adapted um, programs um, to what Jesus has, has told us about um, being spiritually dead. All right. So um, before we go on with that, we want to remember conscious awakening, you know, um, How do I wake up consciously? Um, What areas of my life do I need to awaken to? Um, Is it finances? Is it um, love? Is it romance? Is it um, um, uh, is it work, business, ethics? Um, Is it in school? Uh, What what areas of my life is it? My children? What areas of my life do I need to awaken to? All right. So those are things to think about and contemplate. Okay, so when we look at, um, I think I went down. Hold on one minute. Okay, when we look at activating agents, um, activation is what we seek for the prophetic, but the prophetic is a part of a conscious awakening because we don't, realize we're prophesying when we speak negative and when we speak positive daily in our conversations because we have not awakened to the fact that there's power in our words, okay? 
So activating agents, um, the reason why we began to study the prophetic is because we speak daily conversations that either profit us or they dis um, count us, you know, they take away from us, they add to us, or they subtract to um, us. And so it says, the Lord is using prophets as activating agents in this hour. Um, prophets are to teach profitability. They are to teach what um, the individual has in them or to show them what they have in them. Prophets are called to edify, exalt, and to um, uplift um, others, you know, um, they're uh, brought forward to pretty much build someone that has been broken. Um, whatever the situation is, whatever you don't know, if you're not awakened to uh, something in life, that's what prophets do. They speak into your life. They motivate, all right? And so um, Acts 13 and 1 says, um, now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manion, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and saw as they ministered to the Lord in fasting, catch that, the Holy Ghost said, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work unto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, laid hands on them, they sent them away. All right. So mind you, what it says is, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. So we wait for God or we pray for God to minister to us, but we forget that we need to minister to it because Number one, it lives within us. The Spirit of God lives within us. So if I don't talk to the Spirit of God within me, is it going to talk to me? Okay. So according to this verse in Acts 13, when did the Holy Spirit speak? It spoke when they spoke to it. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent it away. They sent them away. But the Holy Ghost said, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work unto I have called. And he said this after they had ministered to the Lord and fasted. It says the Holy Ghost said, after they ministered to the Lord. So they had to do something with the Lord within them. All right. And so the Holy Spirit spoke. When they had ministering and fasting, had been ministering and fasting to him, the spirit. The word Lord symbolizes uh, the spirit, 2 Corinthians 3 and 17. So according to this verse, the spirit will be moved to speak when you or we are operating in two distinct functions, ministering to him and fasting. So you'll hear more from the spirit of the Lord when you minister to him, meaning Lord, Dad, Father, within me, what am I to do? Not calling my friend to find what I should do. Ministering to God and fasting is a distinct function that opens up God's word to you. God begins to commune with you on an intimate level. So that's a powerful key thing, minister to the Lord and fast it. If we want God to minister to us, then we must minister to God, all right? So he says, I believe he can speak. I believe he can speak to you through either of these operations when engaged at, uh, one at a time or both at the same time. Psalm 78 and 2 says, I will open my mouth in a parable, and I will utter dark sayings of old. Um, Proverbs 1 and 6 says, to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise in their dark sayings. So if I didn't understand this scripture, what would I do? Let me finish this page, and then I'll take you there. It says, um, Acts 13, 1 through 3, Barnabas and Simeon, remember conscious awakening as well because when you're in or when we relate to dark things, most people don't get what? Parables. When we're not awakened, we do not understand 
the parables. And so they were called dark sayings because they were hidden secrets and mysteries. All right. And so the, the catch of it all is, is that when you study the word, it doesn't matter what religion you come from. There's going to be mysteries that you're not going to remember or as a spiritual being, but one day they will, a word will unlock some truth or revelation and you begin to function on another level consciously. And I think it's important for us to write down consciousness because we have three levels, subconscious, superconscious, and conscious. Well, conscious means that I am awakened to things like, a prophet spoke into my life, and he said, be alert. Be alert, which means let your awakeness work for you. Be conscious of what's going on around you. Do not become distracted, all right? Because if you're not awakened in areas, and we're not awakened in all areas, if you're not awakened totally to the spirit, you're not going to see anything but darkness in situations. The awakened state is when a person comes and they can see the light in a situation. You know, one of the ways that you can see light in a situation is, is that you can know someone that is spiritually dead, that zombie. You can know whether or not they're going to do damage to you or you're able to do damage to the dark side of their life and bring them into the light. And so we have to be conscious of who we're dealing with and what we're dealing with because if we're not conscious enough, we will be taken back where we came from, back to death, back to sleep. All right? So it says here, you remember consciousness and death and sleep because the carnal minded man is dead but the spiritual minded man is awakened in Christ so you got two you got two things going on but if death is more prevalent around you because most of the world is in death anyway it hates which means that it's dead and if you have people that are spiritually minded that are functioning in this massiveness of death. What is going to happen if we don't bring more people into the light or if we don't speak more light understanding? What's going to happen? You know, death is going to win again. Right? Okay. So it says Barnabas and Simeon, when put together, uh, put together, Speak this, a prophet and the son of prophets shall hear and obey. They only can hear and obey because they're awakened to the prophet within them, the spiritual nature within them. Okay? So it says, remember, Niger implies black, blackness or dark. So then if this is the case, we can also say that the prophets and the sons of the prophets hear dark things. They hear the dark sayings as stated in Proverbs 78 and 2, Proverbs 1 and 6. Okay, so what we can learn about prophets is that they also go into dark seasons. And they go into dark seasons because the illumination of revelation and consciousness is readily available to them. It does not mean that anybody is exemplified, but to have this information empowers an individual because if we're prophets and seers um, and we're going to new levels, we're going to go into a season of darkness simply because we got to find the light in situations. Light bearers is what prophets are. Seers also, they see the light even though they have to see darkness. Because all of the mysteries and everything concerning life are in the darkness. Okay, when you look into the cosmos, you see stars out there, but you see more darkness than you see stars. Right now, you, you know, we're here in Nevada. The sun is shining. But once the sun goes down, darkness comes up. Amen? And so what do we do with this darkness? Do we stay in it or do we look for 
the light or the illumination? Do we look for the revelation of light? Because the universe is a great example of when we're going through a dark season. It's only a momentary affliction. Why? Because even God said, let there be light. He realized again that there was nothing but darkness. But God even awakened to the fact that there was nothing but darkness. If you see darkness anywhere in your light or you see challenges, it is the time and the moment for you to awaken to the answer and the solution. And if you don't awaken to it today or tomorrow, the same challenge will be there today or tomorrow until you get it. Oftentimes we believe that our situations are predicated upon others. And there can be a dual situation, but ultimately we didn't come into the world with our husbands, our children. We didn't come into the world with our parents. We came here individually unless we were a twin. Amen. Which means that as I become more accommodated to my father who art in heaven, the father within me, talking to it, as it says here, fasting and praying, ministering to him, then he's going to minister to me. Why? Because I am giving him a reason to talk back to me. I'm trusting, I'm relying on, even when I don't hear him saying, I keep talking to it. Because, number one, I've realized that I am not separated from God because God and I are one. Yes? Okay. So, the prophets and the sons of prophets hear dark things. They hear dark sayings, as stated in Proverbs 78 and 2. And, you know, because they hear dark sayings that others don't hear, they are prone to feel isolated. They also are prone to feel that they are not politically correct in what they're hearing. A lot of people with these um, uh, prophetic mantles um, have uh, nervous breakdowns. They have um, mental issues or um, they go into depression because they hear what others don't. So what we do is learn to trust what we have and what it's saying and know that it lines up with the word of God, what we hear, and that's where we get our filler from. Um, you have a lot of alone seasons when you hear dark sayings because other people don't hear them. And if other people did hear them, then it would make it too common. So prophets are not common people, although all people have the ability to prophesy. When you begin to prophesy, though, what you're going to understand is, is that you're going to be separated. It says these men here, they were set apart because they're different. Everybody don't hear the dark sayings. They don't hear the treasures that are hidden in the spirit realm. And then you ask yourself if you're really acquainted with the spirit realm. When you pray or when you're fasting, do you really, really go in? Do you really, really believe that? What are you really getting out of it? Are you ministering to God? Are you ministering to yourself? Are you ministering to um, somebody else? Are you fasting for the right reason? Okay? So it says, remember, Acts 3 and 25 confirms that we are should all be hearing God because we are all sons of the prophets. Abraham was a prophet. Therefore, it seals the deal. But by faith, all of this happens. So then there's a question for you. What do you call people that hear God? We must also remember that all these men mentioned in Acts 13, 1 through 3, were in some form or another prophetic. You go back and read that. Notice also that those prophets or these prophets are raised with Herod. They were brought up together. You go back and read it. Now look at what Lucius of Cyrene and Manian implied prophetically and write it out here. Lucius implies illuminative, uh, illuminative, light, bright, white, um, 
serene a wall, a coldness, the floor, minion, comforter, um, a comforter, a leader. Prophetic strategy, it is the light of the spirit that will bring about the brightness of illumination in the word, giving you revelation needed to build the wall of protection and the floor of intercession. It is the cool breeze of the spirit that will lead you as a comforter. So um, I want to go back to awakening because prophets, they activate awakenings in people. Sometimes people see the light in them and they don't know what it is and it becomes a negative um, situation because people are still running from the light. Um, so uh, let's look at something here concerning dark things. Any questions before I go further? No. All right. Um, let's look at dark things because um, we want to understand dark sands. It says Proverbs 1 and 6. For understanding Proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. All right. So dark things have to do with wisdom. And most times people can't understand or they're not um they're not actually receiving consciously what it's saying when it comes to a parable or a dark saying. Why? Because their consciousness is on a different level. So when, you know, um, you've had a boyfriend or a girlfriend for the recording that didn't work out, the consciousness just wasn't there. They, they didn't meet consciously is what's happening. People struggle consciously with being one in relationships. Um, you may call for yourself to be a, 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 a millionaire, but if your consciousness is not a millionaire's consciousness, you can keep calling and it will never come because you're not awakened to the level of living or understanding of a millionaire. All right. Let's see. Dark sayings and definitions. Uh, let me go over here. It says, dark things refers to the darkened consciousness that cannot yet see the true light. All right? So what, what do you need light to shine in your life? Where do you need light to shine? Ask yourself that because only you know. And once you ask yourself and you come up with an answer, then you can begin to dwell in that space with God and say, um, illuminate my consciousness. Let there be light, like God did, because God didn't know He didn't know that He needed light in um, Genesis one until He became aware of it. Jesus knew that the apostles would soon reach the point where they would be able to go direct to the Father for light and guidance. So Jesus never wanted us to stop at Him. Let's get that revelation. People have made Jesus to be um, a God, and he said that, you know, we are all gods, and that's in the Bible. And um, Jesus never wanted anybody to worship him. He says, I and my Father are one. And so there's a great deal of conflict in um, Christianity concerning that. But I won't go and step on nobody's feet. I'm just going to teach the truth according to what God has given me. And here it is. So Jesus knew that the apostles would soon reach the point, the elevation, um, the new level where they would be able to go directly to the Father. There's no more need for the mediator. When you come and knock on the door, I think it's around in John um, 14. When you knock on the door, the gatekeeper, he opens it up. And after you go in, what's going to happen? You, you move behind the gatekeeper. Jesus is the gatekeeper, right? Okay, so awakening to what is true and not being stuck even in religion. Because if you realize what Jesus is saying, they that worship me, and it was God he was referring to, God in him, they that worship me must worship me in spirit and truth. We will understand that we are not supposed to be worshiping Jesus because he was a flesh man. 
And we will get beyond some places where we've been stuck consciously concerning our spiritual journey. Because I've been worshiping and I have faith in the the um, man Jesus, I can't get to the spirit part. I'm still worshiping the material part because I'm worshiping his body. He said, they that worship me, and it was God that was speaking through him, must worship me in spirit and truth. So I must go within because spirit and truth is within me. It's not outside of me. People look at the picture of Jesus Christ and they're worshiping a, a deity because that's not even, he has no face. The Bible tells us who has seen the face of God. So we have some more revelation coming up here. You know, we talked about eternity, and I was like, like, whoa, okay, where you have me at? Now we're talking about awakening because we must awaken to and be conscious of what Jesus was really showing us. He was showing us the W-A-Y. Many of the prophets, and even in other religions, they were not asking you to worship them as a man. They were, t they were pointing and directing us to the spirit of God within because uh, the spirit of God within is a universal God. And that's why it's relative for us to understand darkness and light. Because if we don't understand that darkness was upon the face of the earth, which we go to sleep every night and experience, or we're walking through darkness in our life. We experience it in a, a conscious level. So we got Sleep dark, and we got conscious dark, right? And conscious dark means that we're not aware of what's going on. We're dead. We've not awakened. We have many people that have um, experienced uh, Christian, uh, all different types of religion that, you know, we're experiencing these um, these religious um, teachings, but we're not experiencing awakening. And that's why we're not experiencing the fullness of life. We're not experiencing everything that we would in the promise that we know Jesus Christ has told us about, the Christ in him was speaking, the God in him, not his flesh. He said, it is not me, but it is the Father in me that speaks. That is the universal presence that has lived for eternity, that same uh, presence that we talked about last week. That presence cannot be dominated or isolated because in the beginning, that presence had no name. Man gave that presence a name. That's what put limitations on the presence of God. When, when words and names became a part of who it was, God is a universal being that lives within every person. You limit it when you begin to put names on it. That's why Moses said, I am that I am, because you can't describe it. I am. I am what? Everything, absolute, omnipresence, omniscience, I am your money, I am your health, I am your strength, I am your joy, I am your life, I am all. I am your courage, I am your confidence. But I can be nothing to you until you awaken and you understand this. Until the light has come of who I am in you, I will not be able to give you anything. Why? Because you have not tapped into the, the, the reservoir within you. The I am within you. That you live and breathe because of I am inside of you. Your organs, they vacillate and they, they, they function under a dynamic that continues to until you leave this earth because I am presence is in you. The, the body functions on an unconscious level. You don't have to get up and say breathe. It does it on its own. There's an intelligence there that cannot be explained. 
but it is a God presence that is doing it. This intelligence is in everyone. And when you begin to really look at the study of religion, you've got to go deep. Why? Because you'll never get an understanding of truth. Dark sayings live within you that you've not even tapped into. I speak to every organ, every cell of my body, and I call by faith healing. And if I hold on to faith, then it is going to be so because the presence of God lives within me. This is a a dark saying that goes away and it comes concerning reality. Your reality is either death or it's light. So, you know, I brought up earlier about hate and love, consciously awakening, because all of the Bible is talking about consciousness. It's a state of mind, a state of living. And if we do not determine ourselves to get a foundation in a state of mind, in a state of living, we'll always fluctuate from one thing to another. Either I'm going to function in the spirit or I'm going to be religious. I have to make a choice. And I have to understand what religion is. It's a limitation. Religion bounds a person. A religious spirit will not allow you to go any further. You'll never understand that supernaturally you have no bills even though you're accountable for for creating them. Your consciousness continues to create bills because it does not want to become aware that there is dynamics on how to handle your bills or how not to be in debt. Consciously awakening to love means that you have the compassion that Jesus explained. The compassion and unconditional love, it does not leave. It's there. The way that it leaves with humanity is, again, when we watch Dawn of the Dead, we're watching zombies. Just like all over the world, we're watching zombies, people killing people. They have no heart for anything, okay? And and there's an awakening that's not happened. You have no empathy for life. You have no sympathy for life. You have no thought or compassion towards life, so you kill. And because you kill, you have an animal nature that you're operating out of, which is a lower consciousness. And because you have a lower consciousness that dominates the earth, what's happening with people that say they love God or those that have shown love and compassion, they're being ate up by the dawn of the dead people, the walking dead, the zombies. You're not awakened. You don't care how other people live. You don't care how nobody else feels. You only care about you. And so you feed off of someone that has been sent to help you build your life up. And after a while, if that's someone who has been practicing love and compassion from a spiritual nature is not careful, you will become, they will become a part of your feeding mechanism as a zombie. Do you feel what I'm saying? Because all over the world, people are dying. Nobody cares. You've got to be dead consciously in order not to care. Because the people that care like Jesus demonstrated and they went out in the streets, they helped others, they fed others, um, they are awakened to love and compassion. It does not end with them. But I believe I've seen one of the little girls that I talked to on Facebook, and she said, what happens when you have become so inundated with praying for people and they don't realize that you've imparted all you have to give and you have nothing else? Who's going to pray for you? See, what happens is is when you get empty, you become a prey, P-R-E-Y. Which means that even in the church, people are asking for prayer, but they're not reciprocating prayer. And not that one young woman is becoming weak, and she's going to fall back into who she was. See, it's easy to fall 
even in this day and time, because there are so many predators praying on somebody to pray for them because the predator is not consciously awake. The predator or the zombie, let's go with the predator right now. The predator does not believe that he has God in him. He go to church. He looking for a word. He want to be filled up, but he don't want to fill nothing up, zombie, because they pray on people. They don't give nothing. The, 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 the walking dead only takes. So I'm only giving this here analogy because we have to pray for an awakened consciousness. Prophets speak life into people. It's not just about speaking life, but they have to be careful with who they come in contact with. Because if they're not careful, what happens is they will become a prey to somebody. Hey, um, I, I, I don't know, I'm going through this here. Well, guess what, sugar, I am too. Would you pray for me? Let me feel your prayer. Let me know you're praying for me. Not P-R-E-Y, but P-R-A-Y. Amen? Because even the the greatest leaders, bishops and um, other higher calling, they get weak. They get weak. They're giving all out. They're ministering and they're praying. But then we have the other levels. we got prophets, evangelists, and teachers. We have people that believe in the word of God on their level, which is consciousness. We have people that will not awaken to understand the Sadducees, the Sudacees, and the Pharisees were the prey, P-R-E-Y, that took Jesus to the cross. But we still operate in a Pharisee mindset. Yeah, I don't believe that, what they're saying. Look, keep your behind from the church then. If you don't believe what they're saying, why don't you check your own accountability, your mindset, and what you're thinking concerning? You know, you go to the church, but you don't believe. What in the world kind of stuff is that? You're going to listen to a message, but you ain't getting a breakthrough. You're going to hear a message, but it ain't doing no good for you. What is going on? Amen? Because the consciousness has not awakened to the word. John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word is God. If you do not awaken to the seeds that are being sown into you, there will never be anything. You can't make yourself awaken, but you can pray over the words that's imparted into you. I want to show y'all something. Go into, um, I want to show you something about the seed. Go into uh, Genesis 38. While I'm going there, is there any questions? I think it's in 38. No questions for me this far. Yeah, okay. Okay, let's let's look look at what happened to Judah. Now this is a little bit different, but this is what ignorance will do for you. It says, and it came to pass at the time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned in to a certain Adulamite um, whose name was Hera. I just want you to hear, be conscious of what's being said here. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shusha, and he took her and went into her, meaning they had sex. And she conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Er. I want to make sure that this is it. And she conceived and bore a son, and she conceived again and bore a son, and she called his name Onan. And she yet again conceived and bare a son and called his name Shelah or Sheila. Um, yeah. And he was at Ch- Chizib, where she bare him. Jesus, I mean, Judah took a wife for heir, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. And heir, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. Okay. Okay. And Judah 
said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up seed to thy brother. Raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass when he went into her brother's, his brother's wife that he spilled it on the ground. Let's talk about the seed. The impartation of the seed. When you're receiving the word, when you're receiving knowledge and wisdom, let me show you what happened to this guy. He spilled the seed on the ground. And it says, lest that he should give seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. God killed him because he allowed the seed to spill out of his penis on the ground. Now, I'm not just talking about sex, but I'm talking about an intimate relationship with God. You don't want to awaken or you don't see the value of the seed that's being imparted into you, so you let it on the ground and we wonder why we're not progressing or we're profiting because you know what you can go to school or go to work and learn more and receive more from the natural world than you will receive from the seed the spiritual planning of God this is a problem when we take our natural life more serious than our spiritual life because see this young man did not understand how God values his seed some people go to church and they don't tithe some people come before someone and a, a table is spread and they've been given word they've been you know filled up with the word but they have no seed to give back they don't even give back knowledge that they're learning from the seed that's being planted. Can I tell you how the seed is being spilled? No conscious understanding of the word of God. No conscious understanding of the value of God. Because if we did, we would take up to study vastly more so than, look, you're going to go and study quickly for your job because you get paid, not even understanding that God is the one that promotes. Sometimes you're getting involved with natural things and you say, yeah, God did it, but then you find a long time way down the line, it was not God. What are you saying now? God did it when it seemed like it was good. But when you got down the line, you, this this can't be God or God, why you let this? No, it's not God's fault. Your awakening has not come. You did not understand because you believe that God is doing everything that you want God to do, but you don't have to do what God, and I mean, I, you don't have to do what God uh, says to do when um, the book just said to us that they ministered to the Lord by fasting. And then the Holy Ghost spoke to them. Any any questions? When you're dead and carnal minded, there's areas of our lives that need to be wakened that we're still not awakened to, even though we believed in the resurrection of Christ. We have not allowed the resurrection of Christ to come in certain areas of our lives because we've still been controlling it. The resurrection of Christ is your awakening in that situation. Just because you went and said that you're saved does not mean that you gave your life to Christ and you really gave it to him to save you. Some people still holding on to their life. The old things have to pass away before God, the new, can do anything with you or me. So I can pray all I want to, but if I cannot awaken from the dead, of the situation I'm walking through and, and seek God on the lesson that I'm walking through, why I was there, what, what, what am I to get out of it, then I'm going to have a problem because, number one, here it is in, in Acts 13 and 1 and 3, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. Cause see, they ministered to the Lord and fasted because they needed answers. They didn't answer their own problem, which is what we do. 
It says, now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon was, um, that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manian, which had brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, the answer for Barnabas and Saul. The Holy Ghost says, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work unto I have called them. But it was after they ministered to the Lord, seeking his face, asking them, what shall I do? How shall I go about? What is my lesson here in this situation? Because I've been going through a suffering time. And evidently it's something that I need to learn if I'm on this journey and I'm ended up here. It didn't happen for no reason. You know, some people get divorced and they don't ask no questions. They don't try to search it out. They just blame the other person. Some people have problems with their children and they don't search it out. They don't ask God. They just blame. Wrong. You, you're you here in this school of learning for a reason. We're here. And if we don't get the understanding that it's necessary for us to understand the journey that we're on, we'll never awaken to the reason why we're here. Because our journey is necessary. Our lessons are necessary for others to learn by way of our teachings, by way of our motivation, uh, exaltation, or, you know, um, encouraging them as prophetic beings, ministers and teachers. Okay, any questions? How am I a walking zombie? When I prey on others, P-R-E-Y, when I have no compassion towards others, when I don't see the word of God as a necessity for my lifeline, when I don't understand that I get up every morning and it's not my will that I breathe, but it's God. If I could get that dear point, then I might awaken to everything in life and see the beauty and smell the roses because I can know that I really have no control over things that's happening around me. I may have created some havoc, but at least I have a father that I could pray to and ask him to let there be peace and believe. And because my body operates on an involuntary uh, message that's conveyed through every organ, cell, and atom of my body, I can believe that if I say prosperity now, faith is working. Because, listen, my body is working through faith. The walking dead are dead mentally, physically, and spiritually. And if we're not careful to understand the lesson between us and walking dead, if we have love and compassion, now I'm not putting anybody up tonight. You're going to have to figure that up for yourself. Because if you can see your brother and sister down on the road and do something for them, then you come to a Christ consciousness. And if you have not, crisis is on the rise because if you can't see somebody in need, then you are amongst all of the people that have no heart. Yes, they have no heart because they don't see what God really put, put us here for. And many people have said to me in the past, well, that's not my ministry. Well, then who was Jesus Christ's ministry for? Because I, I go back to uh, Matthew and we can talk about it. Because he was, he was ministering to who? Not no people in no church. That's not, my, that's not my ministry. Why? Is it because you don't want to submit to it? Or is it because you feel, you're above it? Listen, Jesus ministered to the people in the streets, and so did the disciples. Let's get awakened in here. What no church? But his body. So how many of us still dead, sleeping? Huh? How many of us still dead, sleeping? 
No church but his body. Waking up. Waking up. Because we have been following people to a building and it's become the way of life. What is that building doing for you? Now, I'm not saying there's no anointing there, but the anointing is needed in the street. Wake up, right? Wake up. Oh, you know, oh, you know, you can't get out your house. You can't get out there to do it because your job. Listen, you don't get paid by your job, really. That's just what you think. And if you're still on that level, you better you better um, go and read and find out a little bit more about faith because faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's not what you created. Like Abraham and Isaac and them. You know, Abraham and Isaac, both of them had the same situation with their wives, creating children. When God said, generational curses that you see right there in the Bible because they couldn't wait for God. Anyway, I don't want to get into that, but, you know, we, we were talking about consciousness. And so, you know, even there, you look back at the generations and you begin to say, what happened in my family? I was talking to, you know, a lady that's becoming dear. And she's from Africa, and she said, you know, Kim, when we pray, we don't pray like the Americans. They pray for their generations now. We're praying for 10 generations down the line. And I said, oh, that's valuable information. Because I pray for my sons and and my grandchildren and my grandchildren's children, but it gives me insight to say 10 years. Why? Because she said we want to change generations down to the 10th because we know that even with Jesus, the 7th was where the problem was at. You know what I'm saying? That's that's where they had the problem at with um, um, David and and go into Ruth. And so we begin to talk about how Ruth – You know, Ruth came into misfortune, her and Naomi, but their misfortune happened and took them into the land where Boaz was. And she said, I'm not going to leave my mother-in-law. I'm going to go back into the land. Well, they were mourning and suffering, but they didn't know that the other husband, Ruth's husband, had to move out the way, and all of these husbands and children died so so that Naomi could go back to her um, kinsmen, which is where Ruth met Boaz. And David's time came up. And you see the generations. But we relate the generations not from just a biblical standpoint. We relate them to our lives. How does this fit in my life? Something has to leave in order for something great to come. But if I'm not awakened to the fact that something has to leave in order for something great to come, then I'm never going to be awakened to the truth. I can't have this thing forever. Maybe it's not meant for forever. It might just be for a season. Because we got to get on God, the universe of God's level. He knows what he sent you because he lives in here. Is this just a season for this friendship? Is this just a season for this person to come on the Bible? Say, is this just a season? Or is this everlasting? How is this for me? Is this just a season that I'm going to go through this situation? Or is it forever? And why, God? Amen. So the good news about um, the seed, the season, the awakening is, is that I can pray more readily about awakening or I can practice awakening consciousness more. How? Because I pray and I meditate. I pray and I meditate. The Holy Spirit leads us and guides us, and sometimes we don't follow with um, the things that we need to do to upgrade or to elevate our spiritual life because we want to hold on to the old way. The old man has passed away, and if it's not working for you, why are you holding on to it? 
That means that you need to seek God. Here we go. Seek God about your spiritual elevation because you seek him about your natural elevation and promotion, don't you? That money means something to you. And most people don't even understand that money is energy. So here, again, as they minister to the Lord. Right now, I'm ministering to the Lord within you guys. And that's why I took you to the scripture about this young man spilling his seed. Because if you guys came on here to just listen to me, you got some problems again. I'm going to hit that. Because the seed is important for your growth, not just mine. I'm going to keep on pressing into spiritual wisdom and gaining um, insight. Why? Because I practice it. I need it for my life. That's, that's what I'm, I'm created for. And I'm not saying no one else is, but if you don't study and I'm reading this here book, I have a problem with you. Because you're trying to feed off of me like a zombie. And that's not cool. You're feeding off of me, but you ain't giving nothing. Just like the young woman said. The young woman said over here, I done prayed and I done prayed for people, leaders. And, and now I need prayer. And I feel like I'm empty and no one is imparting into me. So... This young man spilled his seed. He spilled his seed on the ground, and God killed him. Because the seed, whether it is a seed to breed in a woman's uterus or a seed to breed in your spiritual life, it is important to God. And if a person is not awakened to that, just think how much hardship they cause yourself. I hear what you're saying, but I haven't received the seed. Something to think about. People have went to the churches and said, you know, I heard what he was saying, but I, I just can't receive that. Okay, so now why do you think you're having problems? The word of God is a seed, and it breeds prosperity or it breeds hatred and anger. Because if you reject the seed, it's just like Jesus being rejected or the word that Jesus has given us being rejected. Amen? Okay. I'm just going to open up for you guys to give feedback, and then I'm going to ask somebody to pray us close. God bless. So you value the seed and you use it properly. You speak those things as though they are. You have faith. You respect the seed. You respect the word of God. Amen? Amen. All right. Amen. 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 That's a good word. Very good word. Amen. I like Amen. the analogy of the walking dead that you used as far as like zombies and so forth because their bodies and stuff like that are moving, but yet spiritually, you know, they're dead, they're gone. They only have one um, goal in mind, and that is for them to feed themselves. They don't have a conscious or an awareness of other people. Um, they just move on to the, and, and to the next victim. And so placing that in the... Um, same awareness of, of what we are spiritually is remember that we are alive, we are beings, and so forth, and that we can't go around, you know, um, eating other people's flesh or taking away uh, from other people, but we also have to give something back. We have to give life back um, instead of taking life or um, exhausting or draining or being a spiritual, you know, zombie or being a spiritual vampire. And so sometimes um, people get caught up in the hustle and bustle and they forget that a part of their assignment is that God has created every being to give something back and to um, have something to contribute, whether it's their talents, whether it's their gifts, whether it's their experiences. You know, um, it's almost like a deal breaker to God, you know, to just constantly be in a place of where you're only withdrawing, you're not depositing, or people feel that they can't deposit or they don't have enough time 
or they don't um, have, you know, enough energy or they can't see themselves giving. They can't see themselves giving, but they can see themselves taking. And so um, using the analogy of, you know, the, the, the walking dead, <laughs> you know, there's, you can't reason um, with the dead spirit uh, because it's asleep and it's dead. It's not mm-hmm. awakened. Mm-hmm. That's powerful. Amen. It's good. Mm-hmm. Anybody else? Can you tell me what the scripture was on um, the seed? Oh, yes. The seed is um, it's in Genesis 38 and... Um, I would just read down to 10, one, 1 through 10, because it will give you the build up. But the, the, the chapter is good in itself because um, it, it tells you something about Judah, who was um, one of um, the children of Israel, and um, how he sold into sin. Because a lot of times Judah is praised, you know, but... Um, and we have the tribe of Judah, which is a prominent, um, excuse me, Ju- uh, tribe. But what else do we know about the tribe? Do we know about its sin? And, and the reason why we should know about it is because um, I brought up Ruth and David because Jesus came out of the tribe of Judah. So Jesus could not be born according to the scriptures for um, I think it was seven generations because they they had to get the bloodline clean from David to uh, Solomon. All of these, you know, genealogies, when you go to the genealogy, but it's not just looking at Judah and um, Jesus' bloodline, it's looking at yours. You know, it's, it's learning how to consciously become aware of your life Awaken to your life, your children's and your children's children, just like that that um, woman said to me. We pray for our children's children down to the and and down to the tenth generation because here is the generations of sin. See, Judah had a child um, with his daughter-in-law. Mm. And these are the areas in the Bible um, that we overlook, which can teach us a lot about relationships. Because when I study and I'm listening to the Bible as I go on my day, what I found is is that Abraham and Isaac both had their wives with Melchizedek in a situation where they said, no, this is my sister, you understand? Abraham did it with Sarah, and Isaac did it with his wife. I was like, whoa. And so what we find is is that that lie could have killed um, them or caused trouble because, you know, the um, Melchizedek said, why would you bring this upon us? Why would you do this to us and God were coming? Because they knew that they were favored, but they seen what was going on. You understand what I'm saying? That both, this yeah. is a cycle of lies that's in the promised children of God. So when people go to church, let's just get this straight. We ain't perfect. We're not perfect enough to blame somebody without even examining ourselves first. What are you going to blame? You came from a lineage. You were adopted into, as a Gentile, a lineage of liars and deceivers. All of the human race has deceived. It's in the bloodline. But then they say, oh, but you know what? I've been saved by the blood of Jesus. Yeah, but you ain't gave it to to, to to Jesus. It's a lot of things people have not given, and that's a consciousness. They still try to struggle and control their lives. Because they they remember through their genealogy of the human species that they were doing it on their own. It's a it's an involuntary reflex, just like breathing. Consciousness is necessary from the super to the sub. Because number one, if the subconscious is not changed, you're not changing anything. 
You're not going to become anything more. You might be um, called to greatness and on uh, your destiny, but, but guess what? If your subconscious is not changed, you're not going to be anything more than what you've been. Because the subconscious mind plays back everything, negative and positive. It sees and it's recording everything that's going on. Do I have some psychology people on here? See, that's why I went to school for psychology. Because, see, I knew this before I went to school for psychology. <laughs> because God told me. Beloved, I would that your soul prosper and be in good health. Your soul is on that cellular level which it sees and has seen eternally, good and bad. And it's recorded. It's documented. That's why when they talk about it in the Bible, it is documented because your eternal being has documented things. It's taken back. It's recording everything. Judgment Day is simply a recording of your life from your subconscious mind. Your superconscious is incorporated in your consciousness. All of the three of them have to become one for a change to come. They cannot remain separate. And that's a little bit deep for you if you ain't took psychology. But I've had pastors tell me, oh, you into, yes, I am. Because the natural body needs to be understood from a psychological uh, point of view. And the spiritual body has to be um, understood from a spiritual. That's why I went to school for the Bible and metaphysics as well. Because we are not just spirit. It's necessary for us to get more acquainted with our spirits or remember the spiritual truths and the dark sands as we've talked about. But if we do not bring these bodies together, we're going to always be confused and separated as an individual. You think you're fighting with other people, and you're fighting with yourself, separated within yourself. You know, every morning you should get up and you should begin to speak to your body. Amen. Your organs and your cells. Why? Because they want to hear from you. They function every day, moment of the hour for you. When you got problems that supersede, your subconscious mind is programmed to keep this body going. Say thank you for your heart, for your lungs, for the bloodline, healing. You know, a lot of people are not being healed because they only gratify the fact that they're sick. There's no conscious awakening in you. You've been sick. You came here sick. You had disease. You're human. Wake up, spirit man. When you start saying thank you to your organs and cells, all of your soul is going to rejoice because God says, beloved, I would that you would prosper and be in good health. It's not just that you're sick, but you're spiritually sick when you're not one with God in all areas of your life. Because we do not believe we're prosperous, and that's why we're not prospering. We do not believe in the abundance uh, 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 that Christ spoke of, and that's why we don't have the abundance. We've received seed, but we've thrown the seed away. We have not really taken the seed and said, I'm, I am my father or one, I am my father or one, and meditated on it so that it becomes one with us. Because I am my Father one is simply the word of God becoming one with us. Out of the eternal being, God has spoken the word of life for us. And it is so. Fear would have us to believe other than what God is saying. If God has spoke a word in your life, it should not fall to the ground. It might be vacillating in the air, not doing anything because you have not put it to work for you.
Okay. Anybody else? Spiritual awakening and word. That's it. Um, I, I thank God for the teaching. Um, um, even once I was a walking zombie, you know what I'm saying, in the, in the church. Uh, but I thank God for the Holy Spirit that has awakened me spiritually that I'm able to hear the word of God and act and do the word of God. Because there was once upon a time that I was in the church and I heard the word, but I just heard the word. You know what I'm saying? I just like left the word at the church when I went home. I mm-hmm. didn't take it home. But, you know, it, it just took a season at a time for the word just waking me up to a point you know, by the power of the Holy Spirit in me to to study the word for myself and to allow the word to germinate in my spirit to grow in me to help develop me. Amen. And, and even give me understanding. You know, sometimes I used to have a hard time reading the word of God and didn't understand it, but you know, thank God for the Holy Spirit and the different versions of the Bible and even other people that are um, Bible um, scholars that help me to understand the word. So I just thank God for the Holy Spirit that dwells on the inside of me, that teaches me and help me understand the word of God so I can be obedient to the word and do the word. Because like I said, I was once a zombie in the church. And there's still a lot of zombies in the church. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, yeah. I thank God. Amen. That's awesome, you know, to um, look at and to um, apply it to ourselves because, again, a lot of times we don't apply it to ourselves, and the Bible is not about anybody but ourselves. God is redirecting it towards us. So when we can begin to take accountability, and, you know, when I, I've heard this scripture before, but as I've been listening um, more to my Bible app when I'm driving and stuff because I need it, look at what's going on, you know, I need more awakening myself. Um when I remember when I heard this before, it said he spilled it on the ground. I said, oh, my God, hmm. because he was ignorant. Hmm. He was not, it, to me right now, I'm not talking about him planting the seed in the young woman. I'm saying that the planting of the seed is so relevant to our hearts. And we allow it to fall on the ground. And, you know, Jeremiah says that, um, and the seed will be, uh, I think it's in Jeremiah, I can't remember. But anyway, God is saying that no word that he prophesies shall fall to the ground. And the word is the seed, so the prophets have to reexamine some things, too. Because when we're prophesying, we're not prophesying just because we want fame or glory. You know, and I'm not saying that that's the case with anybody on here. I'm saying that we're not prophesying falsely because that is fallen seed. It's displeasing to God. And that's how you get slewed down as well. The seed is valuable all through the Bible. God is asking for seed, you know. So you can't get a harvest without planting not even as a mother and father having a baby. No harvest of a baby can come without planting, sowing and reaping. You cannot get a harvest without planting into others. You cannot get a harvest without giving. See, all of this this Bible is telling you about how to give and how to receive. Nothing belongs to us. Because everything is given to us. Even life is given to us. Maybe you didn't ask for it. Some people have said, you know, they had hard lives. They didn't even ask for this. That's okay. You didn't ask for it, but you're here for a reason. Now make the seed work. Make your life work because you're a seed here in the earth for something. Plant into others for good. Turn around the zombieism and begin to talk to other people about spilling the seed. You know, fake church people. Stop doing it and, and, and be be of, of good good uh measure for Christ. 
for the world, for the change of the world. People have so much to say about the news, but they ain't giving no help to the people that are causing the news reports. I have a young lady that's in jail, and um, she went to jail, and she fell, and she lost the baby. And um, it's been four or five weeks since I found out, and um, I began to help work with her, her husband to try get the paperwork to um, document the fact that she's pregnant. All right. So... When I found out, it bothered me because how does the prison system allow uh, someone to have a dead fetus in them and then they don't do anything about it? And then it's out of my hands, as she said, because her husband has to do um, some of the footwork before anything else could be done. So I think we went on about four or five weeks with that. We're trying and we finally got the paperwork, um, you know, from her examination before she went into jail. And um, we took it over to the prison. And um, I told him to make sure that they gave it. But, you know, of course, we made copies because we know they wasn't going to give it. So I mailed her a copy. But can I tell you how I felt during the process? I'm not her. But I felt her, and I was I was losing sleep. I'm not God, but it was a burden for me. And we have to start getting some burdens like that because we don't know where God is going to take us concerning these issues with the political system because that's politics right there that she's not seen a doctor. So what would you do afterwards? I mailed information to the governor and to the mayor. The governor emailed me back and told me that they're passing it on to um, the mayor of Las Vegas. That's been two weeks ago now. She still has not gotten a DNC. I mailed her the paperwork. The next thing would be to call advocates that deal with prison issues. But I went through protocol just like she has. So what is my point? If we don't start taking into consideration other people and their situations, what good are we here? That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Because if one of you got went to jail and you lost the baby, how would you want me to respond to you? So we got to begin to think about these things and not run away from who we are. So I was going to read this here about um, John, but I'll wait till next week and add to it. Dark sayings. It's in the Bible. Read about some of the dark sayings in the parables. And in uh, Isaiah 45, God will tell you that he's the darkness and the light. And as you begin to meditate on that, you will come up with more understanding and you will begin to consciously awaken to understand that the challenges in your life are necessary for you to grow and become stronger and wake and, and awaken to what life really has for you. Because after you've overcome one obstacle, you say, I did it. No, you and God did it. Now, don't get lazy and think that that's it because as long as you're here, you got challenges to overcome because that's what it's about. This is a school of learning. But if you take it into consideration that you're in school, you won't have any problem because you might get a break for two or three weeks or a month. And then you're back in in school again, right? Right? Okay. You're okay with natural college. How about spiritual college? All right. I'm down with that. Okay. 
Is there anybody else that had anything to say? Um, Because I would like for somebody to pray and close. Um, Am I able to speak with you afterward about that situation? Okay. Thank you. I will pray it's closed. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for bringing us together this evening. Father God, I want to ask that you please put on our hearts uh, the scriptures and the learnings from this evening so that we can um, study and show ourselves approved and also so that we can begin to utilize the things that we are using in our everyday lives, Lord God, and so that our eyes can be open to the things that um, they have been close to in the past. Father God, I want to ask for a special blessing for everybody on the line. I want to ask that you please continue to bless Interfaith Wealth Builders and uh, Minister Kim and um, all of the hands that are working behind the scenes to um, keep this ministry going. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone. Amen. Good night, everybody. Amen. Good night. Good night.